Hello there friends, this is your Humphreys and I'm so glad to be with you again today. God bless you. I appreciate you tuning in on my subject of uh, Bible Reflections by your Humphreys and I, I appreciate so much. May this word be a good word for you. I pray it will be. I believe it's the word of the Lord and I share it with you because it's of the Bible and we try to preach the Bible. Praise God. I know a lot of preachers preach the Bible and there are differences of opinion on certain subjects, but in the main thing, in the basic teaching, in the basic foundations of our teaching, we all agree. And uh, I want to read to you a scripture out of the book of 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, and it says this in this third chapter of 1 Corinthians that uh, oh, we, we need to recognize that all of us as Christians are a part of God's building and God's husbandry, part of God's vineyard, and even as part of God's building. We are together. We're together. We're to work together. A building is built to stand, so, but every part is, is, is important. And so the vineyard is important, whether, whether we uh, uh, sow or reap or, and, and water and cultivate. It's all important. Every one of the parts of that vineyard are important. And so we are all important as Christians. Whatever denomination of church we belong to, we are important to God, and it's important to know that we are His by grace. According to the grace of God, Paul said, which made me a master builder, I have laid the foundation. Let every man take heed how he builds upon that foundation, for other foundation can no man lay which is laid which is in Jesus Christ. Now here Paul is saying, I came here at Corinth and planted that church in Corinth by the grace of God. And now he said, he's writing to them later, and he said, you've got people now that's joined that church and there are those that are teaching you. And it's important what they're teaching. The teaching of these people, whoever they are, teachers and preachers that have been called here at Corinth to lead the people and feed the people. It's important what they teach. Now the church is important. The church is important and it's not only important by being a church but it's important what is taught in that church. For instance, there is no other foundation than Jesus. When, when a church's foundation is Jesus Christ, it's a good church. Whatever denomination, whatever name they go by, if they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that He came from heaven, that He died for sinners and rose again, and that He's now in glory interceding, and He's coming back in His power, and He's going to rule for a thousand years and then take us all home to heaven forever. If people can believe basically the foundation that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, then that's where we start. That's where we start. Everything else is built upon that foundation. Now he says, Now if any man build on this foundation, he builds gold or silver or precious stones, or he builds with wood and hay and stubble. And our teaching and our preaching is either classified as gold and silver and precious stones, or it will be classified as wood and hay and stubble. Now, every man's work will be revealed, but the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, God's fire, and the fire shall try every man's work. Now, if any man's work abides, which he has done, then he shall receive a reward. In other words, if he's teaching the truth, he's going to receive rewards. But if any man's work be, shall be burned, then he shall suffer loss. If you're teaching something that's not good, it's going to be burned, and you'll suffer a loss of reward because of it. But he himself will be saved so as by fire. Why? Because he's on the foundation, you see. He's on the foundation and he's safe. And so we want to see here some things about the church. I want to read to you that the church is important because it is the body of Christ. In Ephesians, the first chapter, it says that uh, uh, God uh, wrought uh, in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in heavenly places. He put Jesus far above all principality and power. That's above all powers of the devil and evil spirits in this world and uh, dominion in every name which is named whatever name Jesus is above that name and not only in this world but in the world to come and he's put all things under his feet and he's given him to be head over all things to the church which is his body and so we see then the importance of this truth 
that we are to build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, which is, He is the foundation. The church is a body of Christ. And we need to see that and uh, recognize the importance of it. We need to see it. Uh, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus as a church. Uh, A.T. Robertson said he had a dream one time and that he fell in a, in a well, a dark well. And he said he looked up and uh, there he saw a great beautiful star shining in the sky. And he looked at that star and he started climbing up uh, that well, the dirt and everything, but he's still making it making it up as long as he kept looking at the star. But he said in his dream when he looked back down in the well, he would lose and he'd fall back. And then he'd start climbing again, looking at the star. And then when he looked down, he'd fall back. And so he said when he woke up, he believed that the Lord was saying to him, as long as you keep your eyes on me, on Jesus, the bright and morning star, then you're going to be able to keep climbing. But when you look down, when you look down at your troubles, at your trials, at your problems, at your weakness, when you look down, you're going to come back. Oh, we need to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look up. Look up. Hudson Taylor said this. He said, the devil can put a lot of barriers around you, but he can't keep put a roof over you where you can't look up. <laughs> oh, no. He can't roof you in where you can't look up, Christian. Look up. Look up to Jesus. Look to Him. Look to Him. And believe in Him and find in Him the resting place. I want you to see also that Bible teaching should be built on this one foundation. Now, there are good Bible teachings, and uh, there are some wood, hay, and stubble. And I'm not trying to judge. I'm just saying according to the Word of God, we look at it. There are denominations that believe, for instance, that uh, you have to be baptized or you'll never be saved. They teach that because of a scripture they find in Acts where it says that be baptized and wash away your sins. But there are many, many others on the other hand that say, wait a minute, that's wood, hay, and stubble. And that's going to burn in the judgment because the Bible teaches that we're not baptized. We're not saved by being baptized in water. We're saved by looking to Jesus, repenting of sin, and calling on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. The word there about baptism. Now, the Bible teaches that we are to be baptized in obedience to Christ. And so there are those who say we are to be baptized not in order to be saved, but because we're saved. And so there's a difference in the fire. But on the other hand, the church, it teaches this. They teach great truths. They teach of Jesus Christ as Lord. They teach that He is divine. They teach that He's coming back. They teach that He is holy. They teach the Word of God is truth without error. That's precious gold and silver and stone. And they'll be rewarded. Now there are some churches that believe that you have to be uh, that you have to be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and, and in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit you have to be able to speak in tongues. And there are others that says no. The Bible says that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible claims in Ephesians 5.18 be filled with the Spirit without a word about being about speaking in tongues and other scriptures that teaches Jesus said in, in uh, uh, Luke uh, Luke 11 13 when when uh, how much more shall my Holy Father give the Holy Spirit to them to just ask him be filled with the spirit but there are those that differ there you see well if there is a difference there that's contrary to the scriptures that's wooden hay and stubble but all oh, these churches that teach that still are built on the foundation they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they are blessing God and others. They believe in Jesus Christ as Lord. They believe the Bible is the Word of God. And they believe that faith will get us through. So you see, they will be rewarded. There are those that believe other things. There are those, even the Catholics. Now there are the Catholics who believe that the Pope is practically infallible. That is, without error. And uh, there are others who say, no, no. Even what they claim as first Pope Peter was was in was fallible. He failed in oh, and several times. And so we see a difference there. And if one is if this truth, then there there are some of those things that are going up to in smoke because they'll be as wood, hay, and stubble. On the other hand, the Catholic Church teaches great truths. They teach that Jesus Christ is Lord. They teach that He came, that He died on the cross for sinners and that he rose again. They teach that he's in glory now and he's coming back. Hallelujah. There's much of gold and silver taught. 
in those churches. And so it is, so it is that we need to see the, see the power and the glory of the Lord. There are churches that say that some of the uh, spiritual gifts are, are not valid anymore because they have ceased. And there are others that say, no, the Bible doesn't teach that, it's, that, that they cease. It simply says that the spirit, speaking in speaking uh, tongues and shall cease when the perfect is come. When the perfect is come is when Jesus comes. He's the perfect one. And when he comes back, you won't need to speak in tongues, they say, and I, I agree, uh, you won't need to even have faith because you'll be with the Lord forever. You won't need hope. Hope. You don't need to hope for anything anymore when you get to heaven. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, chapter, Now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, the greatest is love. Why is it the greatest? One reason is, when we get to heaven, you won't need faith anymore, and you won't need hope anymore, but love. Love will endure forever. In heaven, it'll be the theme song in glory forever. And so we need to see, we need to see that these churches that even believe these other things about the Holy Spirit, they teach Jesus, they believe in Christ, they believe in the Word of God, they believe souls can be saved by believing in Jesus and trusting God for salvation, they believe Jesus has risen, they believe He's in His glory, and they believe He's coming back to judge the world. And so that's precious stones in gold and silver. So we see you, we have, we have a mixture here, but the fact is, the foundation, the foundation, the foundation. We're all on the foundation. So I love all churches. I love all churches that are built on Jesus. I love them all. Don't agree with every part of the doctrine. They don't agree with every part of mine. But you see, we're imperfect people. And we're imperfect. And when doctrine comes up before, uh, out of the Bible, established by men and men's creeds and men's committees, then, then there's going to be error in it somewhere because man is imperfect. But there's no error in the foundation. We all agree there. We're safe together. We're born again. We belong to God. I have uh, the privilege of being born in a family of eight. I was, a, I was one of eight children in the family. All of them gone on. I was the youngest and they've all gone on. I had four brothers and three sisters. Now we used to never, we never, sometimes uh, we'd argue, we wouldn't agree on everything. But at, uh, at the end of the day, we was all together at the supper table, and we all loved each other, and we all belonged to one another, and we forgot our differences. And that's the way it ought to be with our churches today. Let's not look at our differences, but rather let us look at our agreements, where we agree, where we agree together. And let us learn to walk together, love together, pray for one another. We may not worship the same way exactly every Sunday. That's all right. As long as you worship God, as long as you believe in Jesus, you're worshiping the true God and we're worshiping Him together in love. And we're all the children of God. Amen? I praise God for that. And then the Lord says that there will be a time, hallelujah, when Jesus Christ will be coming back and we're going to be safe with Him forever. I want you to know that, and I want you to trust the Lord this day. And whatever church you're a member of, know this, that the foundation is Jesus. And if you believe in Him, then you're my brother, you're my sister, and I love you. And we're going to be together forever in heaven. Hallelujah. And then we'll know which one was right on the doctrines, won't we? But, praise God, we'll all rejoice together in the truth. So let the Lord be your strength. Let Him be your help. Let Him be your patience. Let Him be your forbearance. And live and walk together with others in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, our beloved Lord. And now, my dear friend, if you're not a Christian, say this brief prayer with me. The Bible said, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to call on the name of the Lord. Believe that He died for you and paid for all your sins. Pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Pray it out loud if you will. Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Come in my heart. I repent of my sins. I believe they're forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise God. Pray that prayer and live forever. Amen.